last video we added an auto nozzle scrubber and I've been really pleased with its performance. In this episode we're going to add adaptive meshing and purging. This will allow us to mesh before each print while minimizing the amount of time the mesh takes relative to the print size. The adaptive purge just allows us to move where the purge is done around on the bed so we don't wear out our surface as quickly. So let's get started and as always tell me what I did right and wrong. I want to get better at this. We start this one out by firing up our printer and going to mainsail. Then next go to the machine tab. This mod requires a fairly up to date version of Clipper so I recommend you just update all. As of February 2023 Clipper has stopped loading the default mesh file. While this is frustrating at first it is required for this mod. We also need the exclude object enhancement that was added to Clipper in late 2022. Once everything's up to date we need to click on printer.cfg to edit it. I figure most people have exclude object already turned on but I'll cover it here quickly. The line exclude underscore object just needs to be added if you're not already using it. It's probably best to put it somewhere near the top. Then just click save and restart if you're just now adding it. Next we need to find the moonraker.conf and click on it to edit it. In this file we need to find file underscore manager. Underneath this we need to make sure that enable object processing is set to true. If you had to change this, click save and restart. And finally, we need to make a change at the slicer level. In Super Slicer, go to the Print Settings tab, Output Options, and make sure Label Objects is checked. Make sure to save if you made a change. And that's all it takes to get Exclude Object working. If you didn't have this working before, the next time you print, you'll see the command Exclude Object is now available. Now let's move on to the adaptive stuff. Just a FYI, I assume that you have Clicky installed in this part. We get this started back in Mainsail on the Machine tab. Find the clickyprobe.cfg file and click on it to edit. Find the clicky bed mesh calibrate.cfg include and then comment it out. Click save and restart. Next we need to click create file. and name it adaptive underscore mesh dot cfg and click create then find the new file and click on it to edit it the content of this file can be found in the camp project on github you'll find links for everything down in the video description once you're there go to the configuration directory and click on Adaptive Mesh CFG. We want the raw version of it so we don't get any unseen formatting. Select everything and be careful that you got everything. And copy. Then paste the content back in our newly created file back in Mainsail and double check that you got everything. It's a pain when you don't get everything copied and it causes you problems. Because I'm using Clicky, everything is good except for variable pro doc enable should be set to true. The variables below it is how Clicky is named by default. If you change yours, you'll have to rename them. Now click save and restart. 
Once it restarts and there are no errors, we're almost there. Next, we need to add some things to the printer.cfg. So go to it and click on it to edit it. We need to include the adaptive mesh CFG file. I think it's best to have all your includes together near the top of the file. This does just like it sounds. It includes this file in the printer.cfg. Next, we need to scroll to near the bottom of the file for the print start macro. At the end of this macro, we need to add a bed mesh clear and a bed mesh calibrate. This again does just what it sounds like. It clears any mesh that might be there and runs a new mesh. And once again, click save and restart. One more thing needs to be done and this was kind of an after the fact for me. In Super Slicer, go to printer settings and custom G codes. In the start G code, just above the print start macro, put in an M117 command. All this does is clear out previous messages, but without it, the adaptive mesh never ran. Only a standard mesh was run. In the future, this might be fixed, but it's a pretty benign command, so I don't think it hurts to be there from now on. Make sure you save this so it's run every time. Let's give this a test by running a small print. It should go through all the normal processes that you have set up. And then do a mesh that's not much bigger than the print that we're doing. Yay, I'm reflecting in the front panels even though I was trying not to. I'm getting around to rearranging my little shop so I don't have to worry about this as much. And there's our adaptive mesh. It's a tiny print so it's only doing the center of the bed. The adaptive mesh is also fairly smart. I'm calling for a 5x5 five five mesh, but because it's so tiny here, it's doing a 3x3. Three three. So that's our adaptive mesh setup. You'll need to consult the GitHub page if you're not using Clicky. They have some other scenarios in there as well. So let's move on to the adaptive purge now. Once again, we start out with our main cell connected to our printer and then going to the machine tab. We need to create a new file called voron underscore purge dot CFG. Now find this new file and click on it to edit. And now we need to go get the contents of this file. Just like last time, we go to the Camp GitHub configuration page and click on voronpurge.cfg. And click on the raw button. And copy everything. And as always, make sure that you got everything. Then go back to our newly created file and paste it. Double check your paste. And save and restart. Like usual, we need to include this new file in the printer.cfg file. So under our last include, include voron underscore purge dot cfg. 
Before we save and restart this change, we need to tell Clipper to do the purge. So once again, we need to scroll down to near the bottom of this file and find the print start macro. And at the end of this macro, add voron underscore purge. Now we can save and restart. I had another after the fact addition on this one as well. I got a move exceeds maximum extrusion error the first time I ran this. To fix this, we need to add a line to the printer.cfg again. So click on the file to edit it and find the extruder section. At the bottom of this section, add max underscore extrude underscore cross underscore section colon space five. What this does is allow more to be extruded in a shorter amount of distance. We're essentially creating puddles with this little Voron purge and it thinks that it's wrong. Make sure to save and restart if you add this. So let's give this a try and see how it does. There's a lot of steps in startup, but I think I'll be okay with it in the context of printing. It's not very long, especially when I come to trust it and I don't feel like I need to watch it. I do need to get this go to center out of the mix before the adaptive bed mesh. Okay, here's our purge. There's the little Voron logo. That's cute, but I really think I'm gonna use the line purge instead. So just like this purge, go to the machine tab and we need to create a new file. Call it line underscore purge dot CFG. Then find the new file and click on it to edit it. Then once again, back at the project's GitHub page, click on line underscore purge dot CFG, and then click the raw button. Then copy everything. Then back at our new file, paste it all. Then click save and restart. Then we need to edit the printer.config file again. And then just like the Voron purge, we need to include our new file. We called it line underscore purge dot CFG. Scroll down to the bottom of the print start macro again. First we need to comment out our voron purge command and then add our line purge command. Not the file name you doofus. It's line underscore purge. Then save and restart.
Let's give this one a try now. And here's our line purge. It's a slower and wider purge than I was expecting, but I think that's probably a good thing. A really slow and wide purge. But again, as long as it takes to print something, it really isn't that long. Here's what it ended up looking like. In retrospect, black filament on my new black print surface really wasn't a good idea. I'll keep that in mind in the future. So that's it for this episode. I'm unsure what 2.4 episode will be next. Leave me some ideas down in the comments if you would. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.